My name is Suzanne Perrin and welcome to Introducing Japanese Textiles from my collection. Today we are looking at children's kimono. Children's kimono were just as interesting and colourful and varied as adult kimonos and were generally used for special occasions, visiting shrines, festival days, birthdays and parties and also for everyday wear as well. So we are looking at a girl's kimono for a seven years old girl. It is around from the time of about 1920s, um, has beautiful colours. It is very fine chiriman silk, which is very soft and very beautiful. It has been dyed in the background with dark bands of purple and peach colour. And then over the top of that has been hand painted. It's called yuzen. Yuzen is where you block the pattern and then you paint into it with the detail. And this um, technique of yuzen is the same as the haori that I'm wearing here. It has been blocked and then painted in with the flowers. So we have beautiful drums, chrysanthemums, flowers of the four seasons. It's a very festive and beautiful pattern with these lovely colours. The sleeves are quite long and there are a couple of big ties at the front, which we'll see in a moment. So here is the front side of the same kimono and we can see that it's got the two long ties. This is often called an omiyomairi kimono where it can be tied around the body of the mother when they're taking the child to the shrine or it can also be used to help tie around the body of the young girl. The inside is lined again with silk and you can see the beautiful red colour inside which was very popular for silk linings and here is um, goes across the top part. So it's a very beautiful specimen in very good condition. This one is also a girl's kimono and is in a beautiful magenta and pink um, colourway. It's called jigami. This is the pattern that's on it and jigami actually means uh, paper cutouts. So it's like a, a paper cutout of a fan shape but actually also refers to the stencil patterning which makes up this kimono. So all the background would have been dyed in one colour with stencil blocking all these patterns right across it. So we have flowers of all kinds, we have tortoiseshell patterns here, wave patterns here um, and different classical themes within the fans themselves. It's made of shiozhe silk, which is a very fine silk with a sheen on it. It's very, very smooth. It's almost like a kind of polished silk, so it has a lovely sheen to it. Very smooth and very soft. So this is a contemporary piece. It's not vintage, but it's a very good example of the quality and style of a formal um, kimono for a young girl. When we view this kimono from the front, we can see that it does not have the long ties on it. They've been taken off, but still has the beautiful red lining in the top part inside of here. So as I say, this was a very popular way of the, having the lining. And in fact, the lining goes right through the sleeves as well. So it's, it's a very beautiful piece, quite heavy to wear. The undergarments that you would wear with this would be made of probably silk for formal occasions, but also cotton and um, polyester, nylon uh, for the other types of kimono. So this is a, a formal kimono for a girl um, aged about seven years. This lovely red orange kimono is part of a girl's kimono set. There are two kimonos in this set, plus a yukata summer, uh, summer wear. And this is for the Sichigo San festival, which is the 753 festival. So girls will wear these formal and very brightly coloured kimonos for the festival for 753. So girls of seven and three and boys of five will wear these types of kimono to go to the shrines for their blessings. So this one 
is made of polyester. It has a very nice background of woven clouds in, in that and then um, uh, embroidered um, flowers on these sleeves and at the hem, various flowers. Now you can see that actually it's been taken in, the seams are on the shoulders, it's been taken in and taken up. So when a child is growing up, they will do this with their kimono so the girl can wear it for many years. And as she grows up and gets taller, they let out the seams at the shoulders and at the waist as well, so she can continue wearing it. So this is what she would wear for the 753 festival, shrine going and having a lovely day out. And also to finish off, she would obviously wear an obi sash, but not the long 14 foot obis that the adult wears. She would wear one like this, and this is called a tsukete obi, which is a ready tied obi for the back here. And so she would have this around her waist, around the middle here, and then this obi um, uh, tie with the bow would be at the back here so it makes a very colorful arrangement as you can see so it takes very it's very easy to put on takes about five minutes and it completes the whole outfit this is the other kimono in the girls kimono set and this is for casual wear. So the red one was formal wear, this is casual wear. And it's made of cotton, it's a light summer type yukata and it's been taken up quite a lot. You can see there's a big hem here, taken in at the shoulders, but there's quite a big take up here so that it could be shorter in the hot season. So it's a lovely, bold, beautiful blue colour which will give a cooling effect in the hot summer days in Japan. And it's got lovely big flowers on it. They look a bit like hibiscus flowers and butterflies here, as you can see. So it has a summer theme. The, the, the lovely color of blue will help you cool down. And she would wear this during the day um, for special occasions. But the red one is for the formal occasion. And this one is for, is for casual wear. And this is uh, a young girl's yukata, which you can wear during the day for informal occasions. It's a summer yukata, so it's very light material. It's 85% cotton and 15% of a mixture called asarami. And this is a, a mixture of hemp and linen and also rami, which is a kind of uh, lesser quality silk, so it makes it cheaper and lighter. So it's a very nice fabric. It's almost semi-transparent, so it's almost like gauze-like for those hot summer days in Japan. And the pattern is very nice. We've got temari, play balls, we've got flowers, we've got rivers here coming through in red and pink with a kind of shibori tie-dye pattern. This is all printed on, it's not hand done, and it's even got a printing of gold here in amongst the flowers. So it's very light, it's very pretty. And she might wear something like this with it. This is an obi sash for a girl. It's uh, pure polyester and reversible, pink one side, very pale the other side. And it's got a lovely little pattern of sakura, cherry blossoms, and kiku, chrysanthemums, and little flowers going all the way through it. So she could wear it either side, and she might wear it like this, and tied at the back. So the pink would echo the pink of the flowers in the actual yukata itself. And this is the boys' special Montski kimono. Montski means it's the formal wear which has the kamon, the family crests, three on the back and two on the front here, so five in all. So this is used for formal occasions and particularly shrine going in the Sichigosan festival where the boys of five would be taken to the shrines. Now this is a kimono for a boy age five and it has all the beautiful uh, good luck symbols on it. It is very fine um, Rinzu uh, satin silk so it's very smooth, it's very light, it's lined and it has a traditional black background 
with the pattern going right through the middle and across the sleeves. So we have a beautiful pattern of cranes all along here and a background of hexagons. Now the hexagon is the symbol of the uh, turtle back or the tortoise shell and cranes and turtles are often depicted together in all sorts of ways, in kimonos, in gardens, in paintings, in ceramics and lacquerware. And the idea is that they are joined together in their concept of the crane flies up to heaven and the turtle, the tortoise, dives down into the earth or in this, into the ocean. So you get this never-ending cycle of above and below. So they are complementary opposites and they the symbols of the crane and the tortoise are often found together as in this lovely uh, design here. And inside all the hexagons are lucky symbols. Um, we've got hand scrolls, uh, we've got pine trees for longevity, um, uh, we've got drums, uh, there's all sorts of things that allude to a long and happy life for this child. And there is embroidery, these are painted on the cranes, but there's also embroidery and some gold on the beaks and the red caps of the cranes, so it's beautifully embellished. This is another example of the Monsky kimono for a boy, the formal kimono, which has the family crests, the carmon, three at the back and two at the front on the other side. And this one is a particularly beautiful one. It's uh, rinzu, satin, silk and lined, quite heavy. And it has this magnificent painted tiger on the back. So perhaps it was that the boy in question was born in the year of the tiger in the Chinese astrology, which would make him quite a powerful character, I think. It's a beautiful painting. It has gold paint upon it and also in the tiger's face and in the bamboo. And we have couched thread also on his ear and in amongst on the bamboo as well. The whole composition has been beautifully worked out. There are mountains in the background, there are mists and hills and rocks, and the bamboo itself is very beautifully painted. There is grey, brown and green bamboo here, and grey, brown and green bamboo here on the other side. So the whole composition and the whole painting of this powerful creature has been very well thought out and very beautifully detailed. So we have this wonderful tiger here facing upwards against the black sky and his tail is going right through into the sleeve on the left hand side here. A very powerful piece indeed. And here is the front of the same garment here. So we have the, the two carmon at the front, the family crests making up two of the five. And it has the long Omiyamairi ties here so that the mother could take the boy to the shrine. And it has a separate lining as well, all in silk. And the pattern comes through with the hills and the bamboo in the front. But there's a secret. And the secret to this kimono is that it's a tiger with two tails. So here is the second tail that is in the front because of course you wrap the kimono left over right in Japan, not the other way around. So the tail would show in the front. So we have a tiger with two tails. And tigers are always depicted stalking in the bamboo forest. And this is a charming young boy's yukata for the summer. It's gay, it's brightly coloured, it has all kinds of auspicious symbols upon it. It's got little rounded sleeves like this for practical wear and play. It's made of a mix of cotton and silk, so it's very light for summer, and has this lovely checkerboard pattern of greys and blues right throughout, probably coming from the 1930s perhaps. So it's got hexagons and cranes, as we've seen before, they often go together. 
and pine trees for longevity. There are rivers and clouds and within these arrangements there are also koi carp. And as you know, the koi carp are very significant of Boys' Day, which is the 5th of May, where they fly the carp streamers. And um, the carp is the symbol for the young boys growing up for strength. So we have carp here, we have rolls and scrolls for literacy, and we have clouds and roundels and good luck symbols coming all through here. So it's a very auspicious but fun type of pattern for a very young boy. It also has the ties at the front, the Omiyomairi ties, and is lined inside with cotton as well. So it's a lovely fresh and light piece for summer, for casual wear, for this lucky young boy. And this beautiful little garment for a young baby boy is made of very, very fine and soft silk, very lightly padded. It's like a very beautiful little eiderdown on it, or like a little duvet. And it has a very unusual pattern to it as well. I think the parents must have been very aspirational for this young boy because it has scholarly references to it. The scene is of rivers and of plants, the basho plant, which is the banana plant. And if you know your Japanese poetry, basho was the great poet of haiku in the Edo period. This was his name that he took, basho. And there are little um, scenes of books and scrolls and plumes of pens and also pine trees, again for longevity. And uh, this is um, pavilions where you might write your poetry if you're up in the mountains. And these rather sombre colours of dark greens and blues and browns and buffs come from really the early 1920s or the early part of the 20th century. So this is a very, very beautiful piece for a baby boy uh, with high aspirations to become a literary poet. Of course, with all these kimonos which the girls and boys are wearing, there are all sorts of accessories which go with them, including the sashes and the obis and the bows and the bags and the zori, the shoes and everything else. So that's the subject for another talk. Thank you for watching.